Welcome to Reddit Aliens. What is the scariest thing you've witnessed in the middle of the night? Not safe for work. Part 2. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Primitive camping in the Boundary Waters alone, I had a full-blown moose walk up on me. Honestly, feared for my life for a solid four and a half minutes. When I was about seven or eight, I woke up sweating my ass off and hallucinating, but I didn't know what hallucinations were or that they were possible. So I thought it was a dream at first, and then when I realized I was awake, I thought it was completely real. It started with seeing some bugs crawling out of the couch and on top of the blanket over my feet. I closed my eyes and told myself it was just a nightmare, opened them back up to see the entire fleet of bugs completely covering the blanket and moving towards my face. I looked over and saw a giant ass ant as tall as the room just clicking its pincers and was frozen in fear. Right before the bugs reached my face, I shot out from under the blanket and hauled ass to the kitchen. In the kitchen, I saw the walls covered in blood and snakes everywhere. I ran outside. My dad came to the door with a shotgun, thinking someone was breaking in. My parents called the doctor, and they had them bring me in. Turns out I had pneumonia and was burning up. When I was around eight, I woke up to hear my parents whisper yelling. Turns out someone was beating on the back sliding glass door with a baseball bat. Turns out he was drunk and mistook our place for his exes. I cut down a tree in my backyard one afternoon. The tree was in front of my backyard slider, so at night there was not a lot more light coming in from the neighbor's lights and street lights. I get up the next morning, before sunrise, to make my coffee, and I saw a shadowy figure down the hall. I yelled, what the? At the moment, I didn't realize that now more light was being let in by the lack of tree. It cast my shadow on the wall. So basically, I was a 37-year-old dude that was scared by my own shadow. When I was in high school, I was out late, around 2-3am to 3 with a friend chilling in a park. We were just chatting on a bench, and after about an hour there, I noticed the silhouette in the distance move slightly. To my horror, I realized there had been a person staring at us from the same spot for almost half an hour or more. As I told my friend, and we started to run back to their place, they started chasing us. Don't know who it was or what they were planning, but probably the most freaked out I've been in my life. I was 13 years old at home asleep, 4.35 a.m., and awoke to what sounded like a plane or train hitting the house, windows smashing, car alarm blaring, large objects falling and dogs barking. I didn't know what it was. I got up and fell over. The ground was still moving. It was a 7.1 earthquake, not too far away from my home. I was terrified. I once woke up from a nightmare about a demonic little girl to my little sister hovering above my bed. I freaked the F out and punched her in the nose. She had her own nightmare and was standing over me because she was debating whether or not to wake me up. I have a history of waking violently, so she was weighing whether it was worth it or not. We spent the rest of the night watching Disney movies. My daughter, four years old, black hair, pale skin, came into our bedroom in the middle of the night hair in her face, middle of the bed by our feet, and started climbing up towards me and my spouse. Remind you of a movie? A white figure walking slowly toward me. Unfortunately, I had fallen asleep while reading and left my lamp on. My mother had woken me up to use the bathroom in the night and noticed the light from the hallway, so came into my room to turn it off in her white dressing gown. I'm incredibly short-sighted, so without my glasses, I woke up when she came in the room and saw the blurry white coming towards me. We both screamed so loud we woke the rest of the family up. After that, she promised never to turn the lamp off again, if I promised to contribute to the electricity bill if I left the light on all night. Seemed better than another heart attack. My downstairs neighbor walked into my apartment at 1.30 a.m. I was only dressed in underwear and didn't have my glasses on. Thought he was drunk and managed to convince him he was in the wrong apartment. He backed his way out closed the door and went down the hall carrying something. A week later, I run into him downstairs and laugh about how drunk he must have been. Turned out he'd been away. That wasn't my neighbor who'd walked in. I want to say I was either in middle school or early high school. I was up late, maybe around 11 p.m. or 12 a.m. I still had a bedtime and I disregarded it often. I'd drape my covers over the TV and use either earbuds plugged into the TV or closed captioning. One night, I was watching an old rerun of Gilligan's Island. Edit. Now that I think about it, it may have been Stargate SG-1. 
And around the side of my TV, everything suddenly lights up and I hear voices shouting. I peek through my blinds and I see a man face down on the lawn and a bunch of cops around him. I can't remember if I asked my mom about it that night or waited until the morning, but it was her stalker ex-boyfriend, whom she had a restraining order against. She heard him fiddling with her screen on the window, grabbed a knife and called 911. The cops came, shined a light on him, and the dipshit turned around with the screen in his hands. He had an overnight bag with him, like he was expecting to be welcomed and stay the night. When I was eight, we moved and I had to share my room with my little brother. There was an empty room in the basement, but my parents didn't want me staying there. Finally, after months of begging, they reluctantly let me have the basement room to myself. Not long after, I was up too late reading when I saw a pair of gleaming eyes staring at me through the window. I knew it was a vampire. I covered under my blanket until morning and never slept in that room again. In hindsight, it was definitely a cat. I live on a small farm in South Texas, about 40 acres, and one time at about one in the morning, my entire family and I heard a woman scream from somewhere behind our house, like this shrill shriek. Our neighbors, who also live on a considerable amount of land, were on vacation, and our neighbor on the other two sides is a nearly 700 acre ranch. My dad went out with a flashlight and a gun, but couldn't find anything. The following dawn, we found out it was a mountain lion imitating a scream before it ate some of our goats and dragged one into its cave. Working an overnight in a residential neighborhood, I was on a computer around 3 a.m. and on the second story of the home. Suddenly, a white face appeared in the corner of my eye outside the window and freaked me the F out. It was a local cat who was taking a stroll on the small bit of roof outside the window and wanted to see what was going on inside. Around 12.30 to 1 a.m., heard the sound of somebody using power tools, eventually discerned it was coming from the shed. I was home alone. I live in my dad's old place and a lot of his tools are still there. Over the course of 15 to 20 minutes, I slowly walk through the hallway into the lounge room where the door leading outside is and there was no doubt the sound was coming from inside the shed. I don't know how, but I somehow worked up the courage to walk outside toward the shed. It got louder as I approached. When I was about to insert the key to open the door, it stopped immediately, and believe it or not, the shed was entirely empty. Spooky night for me. When I was 21, I was working as an armed security guard, mainly guarding construction sites and new home builds. People would come in at night and steal equipment or appliances from the houses that were almost finished. So we'd go, lock everything up that could be secured, and patrol around all night. Real boring. Showed up as it got dark, drove through the subdivision, started locking up houses that were empty while the trades were finishing up. Came back an hour later to do it again. It was well dark, and the trades were gone. Secured everything else that I could. Anything unsecurable, we were expected to walk through a couple times a night, note damage and things like that. So I start that at one end of the street, make it all the way down, come back towards where I started on the other side of the street, finish that side, walking back to my car, and I noticed that one of the houses that was essentially complete had a sliding glass door open. I know that was secure and I had locked it, so I figured a trade must have come back and left. Walked over to the house, shining my light, making enough noise so if someone is there, they'll hear me coming find a couple beer cans on the ground by the door. I figure it's probably kids, no big deal. Nobody's inside, I lock the door again and go back to my car. Next hour, time to drive through the neighborhood again. Come down the same street, same glass door is open. These effers are persistent. Park the car, again, shining my light, making sure they know I'm there. Walk around the side of the house and I see teenagers scatter, quite a few of them, at least two or three runs inside the house. Come to the door, announce myself, all right, everybody out. I'm not the cops. Just get the F out, etc. I can hear people moving around. Nobody comes out. Now I go inside. Same thing. Get the F out. Don't make me come find you. Kid comes walking down the stairs. I ask him who else is there. He says he doesn't know. And I tell him to F off and go home. I definitely saw at least two or three kids go inside. So I need to clear the house. I start upstairs where the kid was, room by room, making lots of noise. As I'm in the back bedroom, I hear another person go running downstairs. Perfect. Hopefully, that's all of them. Start coming downstairs, and I hear someone scurry back downstairs into the basement. God damn it. Start walking down the stairs. 
had my old school flashlight in my left hand, halfway down, I hear an unmistakable noise, the sound of rebar being picked up. Draw my gun, announce myself, put it down, you can come out. I'm not going to hurt you or arrest you, nothing. Sit there for a minute, decide maybe it wasn't rebar, maybe it was someone opening the egress window. I guess it's now or never. Go downstairs, which immediately opens up into the open room on both sides. Look left, it's clear, pivot right, and six feet from me is a kid holding a piece of rebar like a baseball bat. He's literally shaking and making whimpering noises, but he's about three feet from being able to swing that thing at my head. Anyway, I didn't shoot him. I probably came close. I distinctly remember putting my finger on the trigger. I used more verbal judo than I thought I had and told him in very clear language that I would shoot his stupid ass if he didn't drop it immediately. He did, and then basically ran right past me up the stairs and outside. Effing stupid kids. They came back to the same house like three times. They knew I was there, and still one of them decided to hide in a dark basement with a weapon. Almost ruined both of our lives right then and there. I remember they were drinking Heineken in a can. What a shitty thing to almost die over. My parents had a full-size sliding glass door to the second floor deck. Once, when I was like 10, my parents went away and I slept in their king-size waterbed. In the middle of the night, there was this extremely bright light shining through the bedroom door, along with the sound of helicopters, scared the crap out of me. It was three big army helicopters, the two propeller type, I'm guessing searching for someone. 